Episode 5 of the Umbrella Academy Season 4 starts with Five and Lila jumping through to alternate timelines, becoming more and more disillusioned over time. They spend years looking for their way home, marking off each station as they go. The pair grow up together, living a dysfunctional life but getting on like a house on fire. The pair try to stay positive but by year 6 they're still in the stations and eventually decide to take a few days off to chill and unwind. In doing so, the duo end up hooking up together properly. Lila tells him not to be weird given what they're doing doesn't feel wrong, but obviously given we know the implications of Five and how he's linked in with Lila and the fact that this is pretty out of character for both of them, it's pretty uncomfortable for us as an audience if I'm honest. When Five returns to the station again, he finds a notebook on the tracks which belongs to him. It's stashed underneath on the side and it includes a way to get themselves back home. Five shows this to Lila after five months and she's shocked that he would have kept this from her all this time and in a way it's pretty surprising that he wouldn't have tried to get back home himself given that in season one he spent years and years doing everything he could to get back to the family but anyway I digress. Lila claims that what they have is just survival rather than a real future together and she wants to look after her kids and return to her family. While Five wants to remain in this blissful ignorance, again breaking character in doing so, Lila has a key to get home and decides to use it. Back in the present, Klaus tries to get out of his situation and enlists the help of Thunderbolt, the dog whose grave he's in. Allison and Claire manage to find Quinn and torture him for information. They show up at the graveyard soon after, follow Thunderbolt's barking and bust Klaus out, ending this side quest once and for all. Victor and Reggie drive together to try and save Ben and Jennifer. They show up at the motel they've been holding out in and find destruction left in their wake. According to Reggie, this is just phase one, as the pair are only going to get more destructive over time. Ben and Jennifer can't keep their hands off each other and there are some nice little nods to Carmichael here too, including a goldfish bowl in the motel reception area and a hanging air freshener in the car they share. Victor rings Ben, who picks up a payphone and tries to point out what the cleanse is and how it's going to get worse over time. Ben Nye refuses to listen as he's finally happy and he hangs up on them. Victor refuses to give up hope though, despite Reggie's insistent doubts and the pair double their efforts to try and find him. Meanwhile, Diego and Luther are shown around the CIA and handed over to an agent called Bud. Luther believes they should go back to finding Ben, realizing the place is full of CIA rejects. We've even got agents drinking on the sly. Diego refuses to see the truth until he talks to Bud who reveals how all these agents are an embarrassment. Lisa heads on up to the director's office but he's caught red-handed while looking for information. Whoops. On their way down, he notices an umbrella tattoo on the director's wrist. He's one of the keepers and it explains why he wanted Five to stop his investigation back in episode one. After grabbing reinforcements, they all fight in the elevator but Luther knocks them all out. Diego and Luther are forced to fight their way through the basement soon after and naturally they have their clothes off too during the skirmish for some reason. Jean and Jean talk to Danny months afterwards, who takes control of the situation in a diner. Jean doesn't like months and he threatens the guy with a gun until he eventually leaves. Meanwhile, Victor and Reggie walk right into an ambush while following Ben and Jennifer. Victor uses his powers to stop the keepers and keep them going on this path, but it's definitely touch and go for a while. On the road again, Reggie admits that he was wrong and Victor is an asset to the team after all. As for Ben and Jennifer, they both find themselves struggling to contain the power they hold inside. Backdrop by this is Muntz, who finds Jean outside and stabs him. As fate would have it, it turns out Muntz is actually Abigail in disguise and after killing Jean, assumes his identity and heads on inside to see the keepers. However, word reaches a group that Ben and Jennifer have been found. They play the song as everything looks set to kick off in a big way in the finale, which is up next. Thanks for watching and do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Smash a like or subscribe to the channel, your support is very much appreciated. I'm Greg Wheeler and from all of us over here at The Review Geek, we'll see you on the next video.